Turn back to page number six, page number six, regular six A. Let's do the first and last verse of this one here. Well, I've been to the river, I've been baptized, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been changed from the creature that once I was And redeemed is now my name I've been changed, I'm a newborn now All my life has been rearranged What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart Oh yes, I've been changed When at last in His presence I stand above He will wipe all the tears from my eyes And I'll thank Him for giving a wretch like me Lasting hope beyond the sky I've been changed, I'm a newborn now All my life has been rearranged What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart Oh yes, I've been changed See you back there playing, amen? All right. Well, last two weeks we were booming. We were up, and I was all excited and encouraged. Now we're down again. It's sort of like we're on, the, we're on the the Goliath roller coaster at Carol Wynn's going up and down, up and down. I thought we could stay on top of the hill, all right, not, not dip back again. All right. Let's, well, we, we're proud to have you that are here. She'll appreciate it. Love with all of our heart. We're going to be reading... You see in your bulletin, Revelation chapter 20, but that's right at the end of your Bible. It would be easy to find. But turn, if you would, the little book right before Revelation, Jude, book of Jude. I want to read two verses there and then jump over to the book of Revelation. Absolutely. Now, the baby. 
Well, then we need to have another prayer, don't we? Oh, y'all didn't have the prayer last time. Well, Nate's, we definitely won't get, but he's been prayed for a lot, though. But we need to pray for him a little more. So come on up. Come on up, Timmy and Bree. Bring old Nate up here. He has, he has been prayed for, though, I pray. Oh, okay, okay. That's right, Jeff preached it last time. I should have run all over the place. I don't even remember where I was at that time. Oh, I was at Myrtle Beach, that's right. Come on up. All right. Nate is my next door neighbor. He's a pretty good neighbor. He ain't had any wild parties yet. But when he gets to be a teenager, I don't know. But he's a fine boy. Timmy, y'all, y'all tell us uh, how, how long he was, how much he weighed, and his full name and everything. All right. So his full name is William Nathan Ross. Um, he was 8 pounds, 7 ounces, and he was 22 inches tall. <laughs> and he's waiting for two or three brothers and sisters mm-hmm. coming pretty soon. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know not now, but he was for the first month. He was staying awake all night and, and playing and sleeping all day. <laughs> and Timmy wasn't getting no sleep at all. I don't know about Bree. Is it st- still happening or y'all getting days and nights all figured out? We're getting them figured out. It's just like it's nothing. Okay. And his grandma is over there all the time, <laughs> babysitting and cleaning house. I see her call over all the time. I told her she can come up the hill there and babysit and clean for us, too. I'm getting a little <laughs> jealous, but we... We sure do love the Goss family with all of our hearts. And I love Timmy. I've known Timmy since he was just, just a little bit bigger than that. And I mean, for real. So this is special. But we're going to have a prayer. I'm going to ask old, old great-grandpa George, would you, how about come up here and lead us in a prayer for little Nate, George? This is a beautiful baby. And we're mighty proud for Timmy and Bree and for Mark and Melinda and all of them. His old great-grandpa's going to come up here. You still got it in you. Come on. Amen. Let's give, let's give Nate a good hand. All right. Amen. He don't want to let great grandpa go, does he? All I can tell him is you, you think the staying awake all night's bad. You wait till he, oh, Nate gets to be a teen and you hear that car rev up outside. Whoa, 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 whoa. And, He's got his driver's license. You, you'll say, I sure wish he was a baby staying up all night. That's what you're going to say. No, right? We're proud of this couple. I'm, I'm te- teasing. I love kids. I lo- I've loved our kids all, all ages. I wouldn't take nothing for any, any of their age. So it's, it's families are special. All right. In the book, of, where did we get back to now? we got to get back to the book of Jude. I'm going to read two verses in Jude, and then we're going to go to Revelation 20. And the title of the message, Beware, Don't Die Twice. Don't Die Twice. This little phrase in you got my attention when I was reading this week. I kept, I couldn't, couldn't think of nothing else to preach on. I felt this was what, what God was telling my heart and where to go this morning. The book of Jude, chapter 12 and 13. A chapter, listen to me, verses 12 and 13. There's only one chapter, so that's easy. 12 and 13 says this. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, cared about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the root, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever." And I'll call your attention to that last little phrase, trees without fruit withered, twice dead, plucked up by the root. 
And I got to thinking on that twice dead. What did you mean a tree died twice? And now while I was thinking on that, God put in my mind this verse in Revelation 20 about the second death. And this is my interpretation that it has to do with, it can, it's an illustration of this. So let's read about that second death. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open, and other books were open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which was in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's hell. Now let's keep reading about heaven. Chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Andrew, come lead us in prayer. God, thank you for this Sunday, and please give us a really good sermon to help us throughout the week, and just keep on living for you every day, and in your will, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I know I've read that verse in Jude before about the tree withered with no fruit, twice dead, plucked up. I know I've read that, but just never caught my attention. But I got to thinking about that. And I thought, this is an illustration out of nature. But I don't think Jude's right in telling us about pruning trees in our yard. I don't think that's what he's talking about. The book of Jude is about false teachers and that will spend eternity in the lake of fire, in darkness, it says. And then we have this scripture right here. And so that was an illustration. The trees illustrated people that were without fruit that God plucked up and cast in the fire twice dead. Then we have this scripture here where it says something about some people at the great white throne judgment being experiencing the second death. And God just spoke to me this, beware, don't die twice. And what are we talking about here? Let me say, let's go back to the tree just a moment. Then we'll get down to applying it to you and I here in just a minute. But how does a tree die twice? I just got to thinking, Timmy, and it's funny you're here because this happened in your yard right out there. We had a, a plum tree that's been there for years and years. And back when our kids were little, it used to have some plums on it. It did, not a lot, but it did have some fruit. But I noticed over here they quit having any plums. And by and by, when it came time for the leaves to come out, the, the last year I let that old thing stand, it didn't even have any leaves. And so, I mean, it was pretty obvious it's time to cut it down, you know. And I could have tried to save that tree. I could have tried to fertilize it when I saw the fruit leaving it and all kind of thing to keep it going. But I really didn't care whether it was up or down. Really didn't. I'm not a plum man. It didn't matter. So I just let nature take its course. And so then that tree, after it, it, the first sign, it bore no fruit. 
then it bore no leaves, and then we really know we got problems. But then the, the final absolute death of that tree, I took my steel chainsaw out there, and I got her right down at the base of it. And I put tra that thing, the tractor, I drug her on out there in the woods. And whatever teensy bit of life was left in some part of that trunk, it ain't there now because it's laid out there rotted. It's gone. And so that tree was twice dead. I saw it dead once, no fruit, then no leaves. I said, that old tree died. But then the second death is when I plucked it out and I, I took it away. And then it showed enough I ain't going to grow again. It's gone. Now what's this talking about second death? Let me say, we all die the first death, don't we? The first death is the physical death. And there's not a thing in the world any of us going to do to stop that. And I don't know if this is still the case, but as, as of, this was 20 years ago, I remember hearing this story, Ted Williams, the great Boston Red Sox, last player to hit 400, that his family loved him so much that when he died, they froze his body rather than buried it with the hopes that one day medical science would come up with a way to take a dead person and bring him back to life. That way he could bat 400 again, I guess, you know, maybe come back. And I don't know if his family's probably dead, but now it's been years ago and he's been gone for a long time. And I don't know if the poor fellow's still frozen or if they finally give him a proper burial and, and give up. I don't know. But have you ever in all your life heard anything that ridiculous and stupid? The very thought that mankind, not God, but man, is going to learn so much about science and the human body that they can stop death or they can take death and reverse it and bring it back to life. Now, is that not crazy? Is that not absurd? Is that not everything against what you read in the Bible? My Bible tells me it is once appointed unto a man to die. It is appointed, but after this is the judgment. And let me say, nobody likes to think about that. You don't. But now Mr. Aikens, every time I see him now, he's, he'll wring them hands. He said, boy, I can't wait till God take me to heaven. I can't wait to see heaven. I'm, I'm ready for it now. That's what he'll tell me. And he told me that just the day before Melissa had taken him to the hospital. I believe it was. And so, and he's ready to go. But I'm going to tell you, there's not a thing in the world can be done. The body wears out. The organs down in here, the heart, the lungs, they just wear out. They just won't carry you no longer. Or sometimes it's not old age or something wearing out. Sometimes it's a car wreck or we just blow a fuse and have a stroke or something and just go suddenly. But I'll guarantee you one thing, that first death is going to happen to all of us. But what I'm reading out here is not the first death, it's the second death. And that don't have to happen to nobody. And that's my sermon this morning. The second death is eternal death, eternal spiritual death, being separated from God in a lake of fire, in a place of darkness. And I, I beg you this morning, whoever hears this live, whoever might hear this on the video later, beware lest you die twice. Oh, you're going to die once. Not a thing you do prevent it, but you can not get prepared and be ready for it. You can get so prepared for it, you're not even scared of it. You're looking forward to it. If you know the Lord Jesus and know like Mr. Aikens that heaven is your home. But beware lest you die a second time. Spiritual, eternal death away from God in the lake of fire. You see? That's right. You see? That, that, that's, that's when I drug that tree out in the woods and I said, it's a gone. It won't never stand there again. It ain't coming back. It's separated from that yard. It's just going to lay out there and rot. And that's when someone's put into hell. They're not coming back to their loved ones. They're not coming back for more chances than nothing. They're separated from God. But I want to talk to you this morning. I want to give you four things that you will not find in hell. And then because I read scriptures of heaven, I want to give you four things you won't find in heaven. And, and my motive this morning is just a good, simple salvation message this morning. Because I got a hold of this and thought about this a lot. I do not want to die twice. And I don't want nobody that I know to die twice. I can't help the first time God appointed it. But that second time, the Lord Jesus Christ made preparations. It don't have to happen. We can be saved. We can go to eternal life and not die spiritually and eternally in hell. Number one, things that will not be in hell. Let me say, when I read this scripture about this lake of fire, I promise you, I'll guarantee you, there's no happiness in hell. Not a bit. Can you imagine no happiness in life? Now look, we all go through troubles, but the things we look forward to might be, you know, we, we always generally in October go to the beach. And we'll start because we got to have a big condo for our big bunch. And so we, we always, so I get they, this particular place we stay, they just have a few of them with four bedrooms, and that's the one I got to have. So I got to reserve it way back at the beginning of the summer for October. 
make sure I get it. And so we get on there reserving. And boy, I'm going to tell you what, you get on that computer and you start reserving it looking pictures. And you look at the balcony and that ocean. You just get so excited. Brother Jeff, you can't hardly stand it. You say, I can't believe I've got to reserve this, put my little deposit down, and now I've got to wait four months before I experience. You know, happiness is, it don't mean you're not going to have troubles day to day, but it's things you look forward to, things that keep you living. You know, I have been excited because this little girl in this plate tonight, I just love her to pieces, and uh, she's one of my co-workers' uh, daughters, and I, I've been looking forward to seeing her in that place. And she got a lead role, does one of the main speaking parts, and I, I want to... I want to see her and be a part of that special time of her life tonight. But look, happiness is spending time with people you love, watching kids grow up, going to the beach and things like that. And you say, somebody here might say, well, I, I don't have the money. I can't do all. Maybe somebody else does to get happy. But every one of us can find something to give us happiness and do. That's right. But there is no looking forward, no good times, never have been, never will be in hell. I'm talking about a place where there's absolutely nothing to smile about. Isn't that horrible? Oh, I'm telling you, folks, I don't want you to die the second death. Know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior and your name's in the book of life. Let me say number two, it goes along with this, but let me say there's no love in hell. Absolutely, positively, in that lake of fire, there is no love. You know, love keeps us, it keeps us going, you know. Love, it, lo love keeps us going. And uh, I can't imagine, I've heard it said sometimes, I don't understand this, how I've heard it said where some couple have been married 20, 30, 40 years, and one of them just up and say, I don't love you no more. How could you, even, even if you didn't love them to start with, how could you live under the same roof with somebody and not get attached to them and not have some uh, connection with them and care about them? That's a sad thing. The Bible talks about the day when love grows cold. I'm telling you right here about a day when love ceases to exist. Nobody in hell is concerned about their neighbor whatsoever. Nobody is concerned. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, we got some divisiveness in our country today, and we just had this election, and, and uh, I don't preach on politics, and, and uh, all I prayed was God let the right man win. That's, that's, that's what I prayed. Of course, I had a certain vote that I believed in, but maybe you vote different. That's okay. It's your business. But I want to tell you one thing right now. America, we, we, we need love. To, we, got, we, we got some healing. We've got too much, we've got way too much mud slinging and division. Somebody or another, we got to get healed as a nation. I'm telling you. Y'all got to agree with me on that. We might disagree on, on, on particular positions of this and that, and that's fine and good. But I'm telling you what, love is a powerful healing force in families, in nations, in churches. Can you imagine being in a place where nobody will ever love you again? Can you imagine that? Oh, my, my, my. And let me say not only the love of people, but the love of God, you know? I mean, it is God is love, the book of 1 John said. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love of God is special. I know that God loved me so much, he gave me his son to die for my sin. But if I reject his son, I am eternally separated from God and his love and his forgiveness. I have died twice. Oh, my friend... Don't go to a place where there's no happiness. Don't go to a place where there's no love. Let me say in hell, I believe there's no second chances. I don't read nowhere here where he put him in that lake of fire and he's waiting for somebody to pray him out. He put him in that lake of fire and he's waiting for someone to get baptized in their name where they move on up. Do y'all see that in here? I've heard that kind of stuff preached. And that's false preaching. That's heresy. I've heard it. I don't see it. It appears to me this is a pretty permanent uh, a destination. Once he, the name's not found in the book of life, there is no second chances to get out of hell. It, it Always, not always, but in life, if you know you have a second chance, it sure gives you something to, to, to give you hope, right? You know, we said it, if, if I've said this before, but if you are an Atlanta fan, or if you've said it once, you've said it year after year, I said that now, that World Series, and uh, I said, no, not the World Series, but the National League pennant. I said, there is no way, no how, the Atlanta Braves or any team could be up three games to one and blow this thing. It ain't going to happen. There ain't no way. A high school team, Archer High School team, or, or, or one of these others, it could, well, it could win one game against the Dodgers. You got three shots, but our good old Atlanta Braves proved where there's a will, there's a way, didn't they? 
and they blew it. But I'm telling you, I got to think about that thing when they lost it. Of course, the daughters went on to win it all. And I thought, well, with all these young bats and these young arms, you just wait till next year and give us another shot at this thing. Did y'all say that? Ain't one problem with that. I've been saying that since I was a child. Some of you football fans, y'all not don't laugh. Y'all in the same boat. Y'all watch your Falcons blow a 24-point lead against the Patriots in the last quarter. Y'all not y'all right there with me on dreaming about a second chance and waiting for spring training. You there with me. So what I'm talking about in life is always a, 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 a chance. You say, well, this thing can turn around, this ball team. A person's life can turn around. Yes, Jesus Christ can turn anybody's life around. But there's no turning it around and no second chance. Once you reach your second death, you're dead twice. You're dead twice. That tree, plum tree, I can't bring it back out and, and, and graft it in. It's gone. It's over. It's done. Maybe while there was a shred of life in them, I could have got a tree doctor, fertilizer, something to get it to, to live again. But not now. It's plucked up. It's gone. It's a goner. I beg you folks, don't go to a place where there's no happiness, love, second chances. And let me say this here. A place where there is no church. You know, I love church with all my heart. I do. I love church with all my heart. And my happiness at church is a small church. That's just because it's the way I grew up where I know everybody. Now, we're going to attend a large one tonight. That's, that's what be, what will be at a large one all the time, be a part of that, but, but it, it, it'd be a different thing. But, but church is church, and I, I, I just I, I love to hear gospel songs. I love it. I don't care what kind of week you had and how much stuff you had to fight through week. you got to admit, when you come in this little room, and, and you got to admit it makes, the day, it makes your week better. You know good and well it does. And I'm telling you, those eight weeks that we had to close back in the spring, that was this, that was a, uh, uh, just miserable. I mean, miserable. It wasn't too bad the first week. You say, well, this, and then we could see this thing was going to go on and on and on. And I know there's some churches, different places. I heard of one this week still hadn't opened up. And I so much appreciate y'all coming back. I know we've never quite got the attendance, but that's okay. But I appreciate y'all coming back because I, if I don't get to go to church, I feel like I'm dead. I mean, it just, it just, it just it sucks the life and the breath out of you. But I'm telling you, can you imagine to never get another chance to go to worship God and hear a gospel song and hear a sermon and hear the Bible read? I'm telling you, beware lest you die twice. You don't want this second death right here. You don't want hell. But let me go on a little bit farther here. And it says, who's going to be there? And those who were not found written in the book of life. And what is that book of life? But it's that book where when you're saved, God writes your name. It's a roll book where when you're saved, you know, you ever see your name written somewhere? They said this, that when, I went, when I went to vote just this last week, I, I always get afraid. Oh, I voted at the fairgrounds year after year, but I get afraid I'm going to get up there and I'm not going to be in the book, you know. Somehow or another, I got out of the book. I'm always just, I feel better when they say, here it is. I feel better, you know. It, and I said, good, I'm going to get to vote. But and sometimes you see people in line and they're not in the book. They moved or the records are messed up or something. And then they have to go stand over here and try to reconcile all that. But it shows feels better when you're in the book. And I want to tell you, there's this book in heaven called the book of life. And it said, who was it that went, that died twice? It was these, what in the book of life? The book of life, the book of life that Jesus Christ came and died and gave up his life that we might live. Is your name there? If you're saved and you know you're saved and you know Christ has forgiven your sin and come in your heart and life and he's real, your name is written in the book. Praise God for those that experienced the dead twice are the ones whose name was not in the book of life. But what about those whose name are in the book of life? They come into chapter 21. And I read you that beautiful scripture of heaven. And I've read that many funerals, but I felt led to read it this morning. But let me real quick, on the flip side, give you some things, four things not in, he not in heaven. And you decide which one you like the best, okay? Number one, when I read these verses I read about heaven, I see, don't see the devil and I don't see any sin whatsoever. Amen? Now, if you love sin and your life is about the wicked things of the world, you might not like heaven. But if your life is about praising God and loving His righteousness, you're going to love it because there ain't no temptation. There is no temptation. 
I'm going to tell you what's the truth. The devil, he turns himself which way but loose. When you think you've overcome a weakness and a struggle, that struggle and that temptation comes back again. I'm going to tell you, it, when I read where Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, I say, well, if he tempted him, no wonder he's tempting me. You know, he tempts all man. But I'm talking about a place where the devil, he's in that lake of fire. He's, he's, he's not there to tempt you, and there is no sin. Do you want to go to a place where there's never sin again? Does that make you excited? Let me say, I see in this, there is no troubles whatsoever. No troubles. There's no rent coming up late. There's no mortgage past due. There's no job layoffs. There's no car breakdowns. There's no, there's nothing. No kind of problems. There's no air conditioning that just went out in your house. I mean, nothing. I'm talking about. I'm talking about in life. It's like the old saying: you're just chasing rabbits and putting out fires. It's like when you get one problem fixed, a couple more jumped up. You say, "Wait a minute! I thought when I got this fixed, we was gonna be good, but two more come up." I figured that out in life. You ever think you're gonna get to the easy part of life? You just might as well forget it. You get to the easy part of life, and you get in this. In this land called heaven, that's when it gets easy. But I'm talking about a place with no sin, a place with no troubles. And let me say, as I've already said, we've had a lot of trouble this week. Who, who got elected with something? You know, everybody's got their opinion on that, but it is going to be what it is. But I'm going to tell you, there'll be, no, there'll be no election for a president in heaven. Jesus Christ is King of kings, Lord of lords, all right? And we don't, we don't elect him. God the Father said, Christ shall inherit all things. Do you want to go to a place where there's no term limits for a president? Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords forever. And nobody to throw him off his throne. No sin, no troubles. And let me say, I read in this passage, no sickness and no death. No sickness, no death. Boy, I hate to hear the prayer list in here. Because of some of y'all, and I pray for y'all, some of the best families got bad sickness in it. And I hate that. I really do. And Kenneth, you got to get, y'all got to get a barbecue going. And you got to get your cook Mary all welled up, okay? Well, we can have barbecue right out here. You know, we're going we're gonna to get past this COVID thing and, and her problems too. I want to see her chopping that barbecue again. I'm going to tell you. And I, 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 the different things, in, different families in here. I pray for y'all. and it's, We don't understand the same sometimes. But I just read right here, folks, say there's no sickness and no death. There's no cancers in heaven. There's no high blood pressure and strokes in heaven. Y'all understand that this morning? There's no sugar diabetes in heaven. Amen. Evidently, there's no even even being overweight in heaven. I mean, just I mean a healthy a, a body that lasts forever, that has no defects and no breaks down. I'm a talking about folks. I don't know about you, but 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 when I read when I read heaven and hell, the the, the, the first death don't look that bad. I'm gonna go to a good place. It's that second death. I better beware, and I better know my name's in the book of life. Amen. Because we don't want to do that one. And let me say this more: the sickness and death. There was sickness and death in the Bible. Paul was sick, said he prayed three times, God, to remove his infirmity. But God said, no, I'll give you grace to bear it. I look at old Lazarus in the Bible. Lazarus was sick, and they caught Jesus, but he didn't get there in time. And Jesus' real close friend Lazarus died. He died, and the whole town turned out to weep. I'm talking about there'll never be no funeral homes. There'll never be no nursing homes. There'll never be no uncalled builders or nothing of that sort tonight. I'm talking about a place that I want to be. I'm talking about a place called heaven. Do you know your name's in the book of life? Do you know you're going to be there? I'm talking about this world can't stand forever. Our life's not going to last forever. We're going to be one of these two places. I read to you about which one you're going to be. Where's your name written? And then let me say number four, and I'll quit with this. No separation. Separation from what? Separation from people you love. Amen. Boy, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Though, If we just had all the godly good people in this church... Over my 23 years that we buried, half the church would fill up with it. And I'm talking about some good people. I'm talking about good people that I love. I'm talking about people that made New Hope Baptist a great church. New Hope Baptist is still a great church. But boy, we'd be great if we could bring them on back, wouldn't we? We don't like to say goodbye. We don't like separation. Not whatsoever. But there's no separation from your loved ones in heaven. And your mom and dad and your grandparents, they knew the Lord and they were in the book of life. They're waiting on them. Y'all believe that? You believe that? And you won't be separated from them again. Amen. And let me say most important, no separation from God ever. Amen. A place where you can worship God 
and the Lord Jesus Christ eternally. Beware lest you die twice. Amen. I'm not here to put fear in you this morning. I'm here to tell you, your physical death, that's the first death. It's going to happen to all of us. But I'm here to tell you, God's got preparations for something a whole lot better. But I'm telling you, if you reject His offer of salvation and reject the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a place you die twice. Spiritually, eternally, away from God. I don't want nobody to go there. Anybody in this building? Anybody that were to hear it through the recordings that we put on the computer of this message? You search your heart and you know for sure your name's in the book of life. You know there's a time and day when you met, got real with God, got real and asked Him for His grace, His forgiveness to come in your heart and life and be your Savior. Not just get you out of one jam, but change your life in eternity. Can you go back to a time and place you know that happened, that your name was written in this book and you were saved? Mark, get a song and I'm going to close it with that this morning. Amen. These are trees without fruit, withered, twice dead, plucked up. Oh, that's one thing that happened to a tree. It's a sad thing for it to happen to a human being. And especially a human being that the Lord Jesus Christ died for that could have been in heaven. That's a sad thing. People would often say, Does, would God really, if you believe in God, would he send someone to hell? Well... If you go to hell, it's because in spite of every good thing God could do to keep you out of it, we just say it that way. Does that make sense? But there is a point of no return when God's done so much for us and mankind rejects His Son and His invitation to be saved. Amen. Beware lest you die twice. Know you have a place in heaven. Does someone need to come today and be saved? Or maybe you want to come pray for another person that does and they're in your life or family and you love them. You want to ask God to use you to bring them to Christ, amen? Or some other prayer request. Wouldn't be right to have church without altar call, and that's what we have now. A most unusual sermon. I don't preach many sermons out of Jude, amen? And someone might question, why do you preach this, Brother Ted? Because best I can tell, that's what my heart and God told me to preach, amen? So we need it. We we'll preach what God says, preach. But Brother Ted, you've been preaching the Gospels. I like that better. Well, we might do that next week. This is what God said to do this week. Preach on twice dead. Preach on that. Somebody needs it. Stand their feet, Brother Mark. 25 in the choir book. Call an audible on the people back here. 25 in the choir book. A country where no twilight shadows deepen unending day where night will never be a city where the storm clouds never gather oh this is just what heaven means to me what will it be when we get over yonder and join the throne upon the glassy sea? To join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. A place where there is no misunderstanding And from all empathy and strife we're free No unkind words to wound the heart are spoken Oh, this is just What will it be when we get over yonder And join the throne upon the glassy sea To 
join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. And when at last we see the face of Jesus before whose image other loves all flee and when they crown him Lord of Lord I'll be there oh this is just what heaven means to me what will it be when we get over yonder and join the throne upon the glassy sea to join our loved ones and crown Christ forever oh this is just what heaven means to me last verse one more time and when at last we see the face of Jesus, before whose image other loves all flee. And when they crown him, Lord of Lord, I'll be there. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder To join the throne upon the glassy sea To join our loved ones and crown Christ forever Oh, this is just what heaven means I, I trust God had His will and way in our heart. We'll share this message with someone else outside the church that needs it. Amen. And I trust everybody came to the altar. God will meet your need. You can say it was good to come come down to church. That's what I'm talking about when you have problems and things. So just to go to church makes you feel better. Now, if your life's not right, sometimes maybe church needs to make you feel worse. Okay? So it's not an automatic feel-good thing. I mean, you get a conviction, you know. But... Uh, you bring your problems to the Lord and to the altar, don't, don't you feel better when you leave? Amen. So I hope this, this morning has helped you a lot. And um, I, I know Brother Bill is going to do a great job tonight and will be a blessing to y'all. And I appreciate all Bill and Lori do for our church with the adult Sunday school. Love them, appreciate them. So come back and support them. And thank y'all for letting me slip uh, away just to do something for a, for a family friend here and get to get support their, their daughter over here tonight. So we'll, we'll be back Wednesday, all right? I'm not, not changing churches, move my membership. I'll be right on back here Wednesday. So, so, and we got play practice. Uh, any young people that want to be in the play, see my wife, and you can get in it. And uh, we're going to have a great play, and looking forward to that, and living life the best we can normal during this, the continuation of the pandemic, okay? <laughs> looking, looking forward to a good time at Christmas, all right? Anything else? And then I'm going to ask Brother Bill Crowder if he'll have her dismissal prayer. I'll see you all outside, Brother Bill.